Hey everyone, um, I'm making this uh, video uh, in response to several negative videos I've seen about CTU. Um, uh, I feel like those negative videos don't really give an honest opinion of CTU, in my opinion, um, that hasn't been tainted either by failure or by um, inexperience or not actually having been a student. So uh, I decided to make this video. Uh, as you can see, I completed both uh, my bachelor's and my master's degree. Uh, my bachelor's is in cybersecurity engineering, uh, computer science, and my master's was in um, computer science. So I hope you enjoy the video and let's get going. So I wanted to touch on briefly why I disabled comments. Um, as you can see in the reasons outlined, uh, this is an informative video based off my personal experiences and personal opinions. Um, I don't want anyone to um, interject their negative experiences on this because I feel like it doesn't really suit the purposes of this video and provide a positive perspective from somebody who did well in the school and also has a very positive perspective of the school itself um, based off my direct experiences and opinions. Uh, I also believe that negative perspectives are often born from failure or uh, are often not fully disclosed uh, from both sides of, of the reasoning why they have that negative uh, perspective. Um, and in order to avoid that being projected on a student seeking a positive perspective as well as being able to project that positive perspective that I want, um, that's why I'm disabling that and, and removing the capability of those individuals to do that. Um, uh, quite frankly, it's, it's pretty simple to shut down internet trolls as well, uh, who simply want to do what they do. Um, we all know internet trolls are literally people that scour the internet for anything positive to, to throw shade and negativity on, and, and that's another reason why. Uh, my last reason is, to be honest with you, I don't really care about negative opinions outside of what I've experienced, um, uh, nor do I care to give anyone a platform to interject into fr uh, on my positive experiences on, uh, at CTU. Uh, I've never experienced uh, anything negative uh, to any extent that I feel is noteworthy uh, at, at, at CTU. Um, I only had one negative experience, and I'll explain that in, in my... Uh, and my uh, the rest of my slides but that being said it wasn't connected at all to CTU it had to do with an experience of one of my fellow students so I just feel like by shutting off comments I can shut all that down so just to be clear this is not to deprive anybody of their opinion it's primarily because this is an informative video uh, and it's based off my experiences and my opinions okay I wanted to uh, real quick throw uh, some attention on some of the things that are offered at CTU before I go into my experiences. Uh, while I took uh, computer science, which is an engineering and computer science areas, uh, I want to point out that a lot of these programs have full degree uh, uh, pass all the way from um, from a bachelor's degree, uh, excuse me, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, all the way up to in some cases a doctorate um, I would suggest that if you're interested in any of these specific ones um, that you make sure that you um, uh, go to the actual site and dig into what they offer because uh, uh, I think you'd be uh, pleasantly pleased at a lot of that a lot of the things that are offered at CTU um, I can only speak to the engineering and computer science uh, uh, aspect of, of my experiences and the degree program itself but i want to mention that i have heard amazing things about individuals who were attending just uh uh engineering itself uh, uh there that's outside of the it slash computer science world but also project management and nursing and business management uh, all of those are areas that I've heard nothing but great things about I can't speak to the healthcare and, and uh, security studies side because I haven't spoken directly to anyone on that but uh, business management nursing project management and of course the engineering side um, I did computer science or cybersecurity engineering which is not the same as engineering um, I just want to point out I've heard nothing but good things about those programs I will tell you that I know the head of the engineering department. I've spoken with him. I've had 
uh, discussions in depth with him on a personal level, and he's an amazing, amazing person that I've heard nothing but good things about, and he's really held that program uh, to a high standard as well. Um, okay, so take your time and look into some of these if you find an interest. They all offer great paths for a degree. Okay, as I pointed out, my area of study was in uh, computer science, cybersecurity, engineering. Uh, that was for my bachelor's, and my master's was in computer science. Uh, I did well in both. I graduated with honors summa cum laude in uh, my bachelor's, and I did a 4.0 GPA in my master's. So um, the perspective you're going to get is from a perspective who, uh, from somebody who really enjoyed the courses, who really applied himself, um, successfully completed uh, both degrees, and uh, and I'll give you um, examples of, of things that I used that I felt really contributed to my overall success. Okay, I want to point out some things about uh, being a, uh, things I enjoyed being a student at CTU that I feel uh, uh, that I think really would give you an understanding of what it's kind of like to be a student there. Um, so staff member interaction, uh, I always felt that student success, finance, and, and any other department for that matter that I, that I had uh, interactions with, um, uh, specifically I mentioned uh, in the first one I mentioned student success, uh, my student success coach was absolutely amazing. Uh, Melanie uh, was my first student success coach. She's moved on to a new career um, and and but that being said, they're they're all amazing in that office. Uh, my last uh, student success coach was Brandy. Uh, she is one of the department heads, I, I believe, in that in that section. Um, she's amazing. Uh, they are the, everyone in the office is extremely friendly, very professional. Um, uh, veterans office, absolutely amazing. Anytime I needed an event or ha had a concern having to do with my VA aspect of the being at the school, was always handled by the VA. They always made sure all my all my paperwork was properly dealt with. Um, if I had any concerns, I mean, they're they're all amazing in that office from top to bottom. Uh, just like any of the other staff, but specifically the veterans uh, office was was dealing. Uh, directly with the VA if, if I needed it, and they were also outstanding. Um, I would periodically go in, and I suggest that people periodically go into the financial office. Um, only went in there one time for a legitimate concern uh, that was quickly cleared up and, and explained uh, as to why uh, a mistake occurred. Um, and that's what it was for me because I generally kept up on all my financial, uh, even though I was using my benefits, I always kept up with the office, financial office, to make sure that my graduation or my degree path and my graduation date, um, after changing my, uh, I changed my degree one time and I actually made it into a much more difficult, I went from computer science in general to the cybersecurity or engineering, which involved a lot more programming uh, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to go down that path to get the programming but also stay in this in the uh, cybersecurity realm so when I did that my main concern was okay did everything financially carry over uh, you need to talk to these people if you do that because if if you change things it changes your finances and your credit standing uh, if you don't verify that and that's also something you want to talk to student success about uh, that their, your success coach will make sure that, that that's taken care of for you. Uh, my professors, uh, absolutely amazing. I know I wrote this stuff in here. I'm just kind of shooting from the hip, but um, you feel free to pause this and read what I wrote. It's pretty self-explanatory. All my professors were extremely professional. Uh, additionally, they were knowledgeable and always willing to provide uh, necessary guidance to ensure I was successful in my courses. Um, I honestly never felt one single time that I was being kind of left out there on my own if I felt I needed help. Um, additionally, the, the professors there are almost all of them, if not all, all the ones I had. I don't think I ever had a single professor in either one of my degrees that wasn't actively working or had direct ties with the IT slash cybersecurity industry. Um, the advantages to that, and I'll point that out a little bit later, but briefly, uh, the advantages to that is that their direct ties uh, also influence their direct knowledge, and, and that trickles down to you in their teaching. So the importance of, of not having a, some student uh, being taught by a professor that's, that's uh, a traditional college 
professor, and I'm not shunning other colleges, I'm just making the comparison to, to having a professor that's actually working in the industry, um, is that his knowledge is, is very current. Whereas if you have someone who's simply reading books uh, to keep up their knowledge in, in a traditional environment, um, it, it's not always going to be the case. Because I mean, I've I can tell you that a lot of the knowledge I gained uh, outside of the course books was, I think, in my opinion, much more valuable uh, in application, uh, not in knowledge-wise. It's all equal across the board, but in my my ability to apply that knowledge and to kind of draw a bigger picture based off how they were putting that no that knowledge on me or or, or uh, uh, introducing me to those er that area of knowledge, it was it was invaluable, uh, honestly. So that connection is 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 a huge huge thing. Uh, not to mention the networking possibilities that they introduce you to. If you're a student that applies himself, uh, one of the things that I really noticed uh, specifically in my experiences is that my willingness for my instructors to introduce me to people within the industry. Um, if they know you're going to contribute positively to the industry, they are very eager to introduce you to people. Um, and, and when they do that, that really says a lot. It says volumes to the people that they're introducing you to because they don't do that lightly. So if you're a student that applies himself and, and shows your willingness to be a, a, a contributing factor to that industry, they're going to put forth extra effort on that. And that's important that you keep that in mind. Um, other students. Uh, my experience with other students was uh, was amazing. Uh, and I, as you can see at the bottom, I point out the only negative experience I ever had with a student, uh, sadly, was with one of my uh, female uh, co-students. Uh, and she wasn't in my class, but I offered assistance to her. And she turned in the work that I, uh, some research that I helped her develop as her own. And we, we had a discussion about that. And, uh, and that was really the only negative uh, outcome or negative interaction I ever had in both my degrees. Um, it's, it's not common, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I think that's what shocked me and kind of upset me the most is that it, I had never come across that at CTU. Um, and it was brought up uh, and, and dealt with through the, uh, the appropriate channels. But um, yeah, that was the only negative uh, negative uh, interaction I had. Um, I never once felt like any of my fellow students uh, in any of my classes were uh, were standoffish if I needed help or if I kind of leaned over and say, "Hey, man, do you understand this?" And we'd get together either after class or during class if we weren't doing anything in the class, and they would explain their perspective, which I, I you know, aside if my if my professor, which was very rare, if my professor was busy helping someone else. Um, then I would kind of lean to one of my fellow students and not one time throughout my, either one of my degrees, uh, did I ever feel like I couldn't reach out and, or, or lean over and ask for help. Uh, the, the level of professionalism goes from staff to student at, at, our, at CTU. Uh, and you'll see that. And, and <laughs> the funny thing about the school is that a lot of them are veterans, not all, but a lot of them are. And so if they don't know what the hell they're doing, they'll tell you, you know, I think I have no idea what we're doing either. I mean, we both need to get help. So it's, there's a certain level of honesty between each other as well. So they're not going to sit there and try to mislead you. Uh, and, and again, this is just my experiences. I don't, I can't speak for other people, but I've had nothing but positive experiences uh, across the board from staff and student. Okay, I wanted to point out some things that I enjoyed about uh, my courses. So uh, courses were extremely well planned. Uh, anytime I needed guidance, my professor, uh, my professor was always easily accessible uh, and always willing to go. Uh, go back to me uh, on times or get back to me on times to guidance or answers uh, to my concerns. I want to I want to I wanna kind of reiterate this like I know a big concern especially if it's an online course. Uh, I, I did my but just to be clear I did my bachelor's completely online or excuse me on ground. My master's was done uh, online so obviously there was concern when I did my master's more than my bachelor's but um, the big concern about availability for the student to the teach to the to the professor, um, you're not going to have any problem reaching out to your professors. Um, throughout my entire time uh, of both degrees, um, all the classes I took, I never never ever one time had uh, a serious concern about being able to reach out to my teacher and him and that and, and that professor uh, get back to me. Um, in some cases, uh, I would even. Uh, and I'm not saying this is a standard, but uh, just to kind of give you a level of 
a professionalism that I came across. Uh, in a lot of cases, actually, I would I would send late night um, um, kind of emails or messages using the app to my professor in the, in the wee hours of the night, you know, well well after their office hours, um, expecting a reply the next morning. And, and sometimes, not all, all the times, but sometimes I'd get it that night. Um, but then again, the type of student you are, I think, really ways to their 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 want to get back to you quickly not to say that they don't get back to all their students more quickly i just want to point out that if you're a student that is that shows that you're sincerely interested and you're looking for that high gpa and you want to maintain that and that your work reflects that then you're you're going to get that same response back from your professors and you're going to experience very professional professors at ctu but just understand that the effort that you get back from them that going above and beyond, like getting an email at 11 o'clock at night in response to your question, you just sent them at like 1030. That generally is going to happen more often. I'm not going to say that they, you know, play favorites, but if you're if you're a driven student, then they're going to be equally driven to get back to you more quickly to make sure that you're doing well. Um, if you're that student that doesn't turn in his assignments and uh, or waits to the end of the course to turn in assignments, expecting a good grade, uh, which I quite often saw uh, in, in a few of my classes, um, that effort isn't going to be, I mean, let's just be honest, as human nature, you, you put out effort the same that you're getting. So just keep that in mind. Um, I was never once discouraged by a professor to reduce the number of pages of my papers, which uh, often vastly exceeded the minimal requirement for an assignment. Uh, I was encouraged to continue uh, good work, and uh, they were delighted uh, at my clear interest in in diving deep into the research and understand my career field better. Uh, so let me just say that, like a lot of my papers, uh, I vastly exceeded the number of pages required, and it had nothing to do with trying to create work for my professor. Initially, when I started doing that, it was to, uh, and continued to be, uh, so that I can gain a full understanding of, of my degree path as well as my industry, uh, my my career in, uh, of interest, uh, which is cybersecurity uh, on the engineering side. And uh, so one of my initial concerns when I started doing my papers was, man, I, I'm doing a lot. I hope it doesn't upset my professor. I, I never felt one time or nor did I ever hear one time from my professor for me to reduce the number of pages of my paper. And my papers were pretty long. Um, during my bachelor's degree, I think I did a paper that was the requirement for one section that we were doing was 20 something pages and I, uh, and I think it ended up being mine ended up being almost uh, 50 to 60 pages. And that's just an example. I've had longer pa papers, but and that's not the requirement. There are minimals in each section uh, throughout the course, but um, I just want to point out that not a single professor in either one of my degrees discouraged me from doing hard work uh, that they knew would create work in grading for them. Um, and I, I can't speak to other colleges, I can't speak to other professors in other colleges, but I can tell you that that in itself was, uh, it said a lot about my professors to me uh, as a student that was very driven. Um, I never felt bored in any of my classes. <laughs> professors, had, with the, the way that they connect the industry knowledge that they have and their direct no, uh, connection with the industry, um, they, they teach it the way it's going to benefit you in the industry. And um, if you have an interest in that career field, which I which I hope it, you, because you chose it's your degree path, um, you're never going to be bored. Um, IT and, and cybersecurity, the ones I chose, the, the direction I chose was, uh, it's a very fast paced moving moving uh, industry. So the courses are equally fast paced. All right, so just keep that in mind. Uh, even though uh, many of my courses were very tough, I had a lot of fun. Uh, in all my courses, and uh, I seriously cannot recall a single course I did not enjoy attending. I really can't. I know that sounds a little like, um, uh, I guess, overinflated to say, but the truth is, is I really enjoyed every single time I went to class, uh, whether that was online or, uh, I mean, we had fun, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, but that but that was a rapport, and if you put out positive, uh, like you're there for the purposes of being successful, like I think about 98% of the people I interacted with at that school, um, I think you're going to get that back. Um, I did have a couple of students that were really um, 
uh, quiet and didn't talk, you know, and, and, and didn't do well or quiet uh, and to themselves and did do well. So you, you'll, you'll come across uh, a different types of students. But overall, um, the size of the classroom, it, it's almost impossible not to interact with your, your fellow classmates. And you build a rapport with all of them. You kind of get to know them pretty well. So you need to know who the, who the hard workers are and who aren't. And you're not going to just like shadow through a class and not kind of stand out as a person that's either not doing their work or someone who is. Um, I used to have a lot of my fellow classmates ask me for help with, with courses, which I, I enjoyed because it, it, it actually gave me a deeper understanding of the things I was explaining to them. So um, I, I had fun. I mean, I, I just wanted to kind of throw it out that I really enjoyed. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, I was not a good student in high school. Um, uh, for personal reasons, I just I, my focus was on my friends, and 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 not school. And and I was actually concerned when I started my bachelor's degree of whether or not I was going to be able to to really buckle down and apply myself. But the minute that I attended CTU, man, everything just took off, and I started to really kind of blossom as a student. I started realizing how uh, CTU made me feel like I was a good student, like I had more capability than I than I realized, and and that really. Uh, boosted my my confidence in academics like tremendously. I want to point out some things I liked about my professors. Um, uh, like I said, I could go on for like paragraphs upon paragraphs, but these are primarily the the, the key points that I really found uh, uh, key points I found invaluable. Um, all of my professors are very polite and professional. They always uh, were accessible uh, for guidance and clarification on assignments and, pro and, and uh, projects we were working on. Uh, all of my professors were still actively employed, as I mentioned a couple times now. They were connected to the, uh, to the industry of study that they, were, that they were in and that they were teaching. Um, uh, was, this meant that their knowledge was still relevant and up to date. Uh, and I can't say bad things about traditional college uh, professors who aren't actively working, because I, I, to be honest with you, in my, indus, in my industry of study, I've never experienced it. So um, I just know what I experienced, and, and all of the knowledge that was passed to me was very current. Um, it's very relative, uh, related and relative to, to current situations and, uh, and careers within the industry at that time. Uh, so that's, I think that's an important point to point out, you know, that, that connection is, is vital. Uh, all were very serious and uh, enthused about teaching and took uh, the teaching of anyone entering the industry seriously. Um, so I think this is important to point out because if you're going into an industry and then uh, at CTU, the difference between a traditional school or a traditional professor and the professor that you're dealing with at CTU and something that you should definitely consider is the fact that there is a connection, a direct connection can help you, but it could also uh, paint you in a bad light. If if you come in with a attitude like you think you know everything, which you, if you're a college student, you absolutely do not know anything relative, uh, like as far as like in the grand scheme of the knowledge that you're going to have and once you're in the career field and uh, once you develop your, your knowledge after a couple years, in comparison, what you learn in the classroom is minute. <laughs> um, you are not going to learn everything you need to know uh, for your entire career while you're attending college. The majority of that knowledge is going to take off vastly once you start your career. Um, and let me just say that your reputation starts in that classroom at CTU. Because, it, because of the direct connection between industry and the teachers that teach, um, they have direct interaction and connections or they're working, they're currently employed in the industry. So that means that they are going to, that, that impression is going to follow you. So when you go into the classroom, show that respect uh, for their knowledge and, and, uh, and their willingness to, to bring you into the industry. Uh, I'm not saying that anyone's going to throw you under the bus, but because I've never seen that at CTU. But I will tell you that uh, uh, having help in comparison to not having the help of someone already in the industry it makes a huge difference. So just make sure you go in with a positive attitude in your classes and, and you project that in your work study habits and your assignments and, and don't do mediocre work um, and, and expect good grades because that, that doesn't fly at CTU. Uh, not if you expect to do well. I mean, you, you can get through any course uh, just by doing the minimal, but 
by excelling and doing the best you can, you're going to, you're going to paint yourself in a positive light. That's going to follow you into the industry. You know, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, negative experiences while attending CTU. Um, aside from that one student, um, uh, I got to tell you, I never really had anything negative, negative experiences with, uh, any staff or any student. And like I said, outside of that one, um, so uh, I'll just briefly touch. I never had a negative interaction with any a member of staff, a CT staff. I attribute this to several reasons. Um, one, uh, I stayed. Excuse me. I, I researched and studied my course, uh, my courses before I, I scheduled them and put them into my my degree plan. Uh, like the degree plan itself is set, but how you organize each class is uh, there's a certain criteria that you have to meet before going forward. But researching, you can you can make uh, minute changes within that schedule to fit your best learning uh, capabilities, and uh, and I did that, and I think that was one of the main reasons why I did well because I worked closely with my student success coach, and explained to her my understanding of both my my ways I learned, as well as what I understood about the courses. Uh, something to keep in mind when you're talking to your student success coaches, a lot of them don't have backgrounds in engineering or necessarily cybersecurity or, or IT or whatever field. Um, but they do have a, a vast understanding of each one of those courses and what the course requirements are prior to moving into that course. So what that it, it's a benefit that they can properly set you up for the proper course. But for you to choose the courses that best suit you um, and, and kind of you can kind of work with some of the courses they offer, you know, even if they're not in your degree plan, you can request to have certain classes pulled in, uh, in replacement, uh, if you feel like you're going to get, you know, if it carries the same weight. Um, and I figured this out, uh, halfway through my bachelor's degree and it really, it, after I finished my core classes and I really started diving into researching my classes, it really made a difference in my enjoyment in the class, uh, my personal prep preparation beforehand, um, and also like that shock and awe of walking into a class and being shocked by the level of stuff that you're going to have to do, it's gone. You already know what to expect if you research the course. You already know what's, uh, what's coming. CQ is really good with providing information if you ask for it. So if you want to know about that class, you can find out who's going to either teach it and talk to them, ask them what their expectations are through email or through per, uh, personal interactions in the hallways and say, hey, look, you know, what, what do you think will make me better prepared for this course? So the, doing that really helped me massively, massively. I never once was surprised by any of my courses. Uh, after each term, I also stayed on top of my finances. My finances, not every every time I finish a class, but quarterly, I at least checked on my finances or my, or my, uh, my benefits to make sure that they were matching. Um, and also my credits, making sure that my credits uh, after I changed my degree from computer science to cybersecurity engineering, I was very leery of making sure uh, that that matched constantly. Um, and, and that really paid off toward the end because there was one class I had to repeat, um, not because of the change, but because I changed the class myself and it didn't carry the same weight as another class. But it was my staying on top of those that helped me catch it. And, and my student success coach is also uh, a person who brought that to my attention. Uh, and she know, know, she her knowing how important me staying on top of my, my scheduling uh, was the main thing I think that helped her catch that. Because uh, with it, she knew I was gonna be coming in shortly. And so she started researching and that's what brought that to light. And then we were able to catch it a couple of semesters before and it was no problem. Uh, as a matter of fact, I graduated with a couple of extra credits above what I was required. Um, above everything else, uh, after I made any changes in my degree path, like I just mentioned, uh, make sure that you check on your credits and your finance. If you make any changes, you have to stay on top of that throughout the rest of your 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 degree. Uh, if you don't and you get slipped, then that 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 if you don't meet your graduation degree and graduation date because of changing your degree that changed your credit limits or the amount of credits that carried over or your finances uh, don't blame the staff about that all right that was on you I, i've seen students i call, actually seen this a couple times a couple of students did this um uh, one of them took to the internet about it and it was kind of funny but uh it was absolutely the, their individual fault as an adult attending college 
it is ultimately your responsibility to stay abreast of your your, your college situation. Um, that's from the finance, financial and the credit perspective. You need to maintain those and make sure. Uh, I would say checking your finances quarterly is a good practice, or if you're using uh, benefits, make sure your benefits are all good to go every, at least every quarter. But your credits, make sure after you finish uh, uh, your courses, make sure your credits are matching your, your degree and your graduation path. I'm, I'm not going to kick that anymore, but I mean, you might hear it mentioned a couple more times, but that's pretty much one of the most important things I've big things I've seen people fail for. Okay, uh, just like I mentioned, some of the reasons uh, I, I saw other students fail. Uh, these are like legitimately, this, these pretty much can sum it up everything I've saw in, in regards to the students seeing students fail. Um, uh, they And they failed horribly because they, they didn't do the fall, do these things. So a lack of personal motivation and unwillingness to apply themselves to ensure they completed all their assignments uh, on time and um, and submitted the minimal requirements within each assignment. That was huge. I used to see all the time either like it, uh, sometimes I'd see students wouldn't even show up for class at all and then they'd show up one time a week to, to satisfy their attendance. But um, you see a lot of times you see students that, that hand in mediocre work and then they get upset when they don't get a, an A or a B, you know, because there's this myth that, that the professors these days give you whatever, uh, whatever, like uh, whatever they need to give you to make themselves look good. And that's not the case. I, I can't speak for other, co other colleges, but I can tell you this. CTU does not give out grades. If you earn an F, it's because you earned it. If you earn a D, it's because you earned it. Um, and if you earn an A, the same same applies. So just keep that in mind. Uh, a big one was uh, students didn't seek assistance when they were struggling until it was too late. Uh, technical degrees move quickly, and you uh, you must stay up with the course because it is extremely difficult to catch up. Um, I, I can't reiterate this enough. Uh, specifically, if you choose an engineering or a, uh, a difficult technical degree, uh, computer science is difficult. Programming classes are extremely difficult Difficult if you get behind. They're easy if you stay up, you know, and if you stay abreast and you do some studying before the class and you start prepping before the class, you, you'll do well. Um, it, it just don't wait till you're so uh, uh, deep in the water, you know, and struggling that you can't get help. You can't get the help unless you, unless you ask. I can't stress that enough. Uh, lack of carry, uh, caring regarding their GPA. Um, poor assignment submission. Um, I mean, I said that kind of in the first one. It, it goes along with the first point. Um, you'll find that a lot of students in, in college are either there for the benefits or there for the finance, the financial aid and, and care little about their GPA. And I found that shocking, to be honest with you. I'm like, you're there. Why not do well and then get something out of it? But uh, apparently that's not that's not the opinion of everyone in school, and you just kind of have to go with the flow of what, what they want to do. It's their, their, it's their futures. Um, it'll piss you off, <laughs> but just roll with it. Um, so, I don't know. There's no reason to kick that. I mean, that the, the, the horse is dead. I mean, people that choose that path, I, I have nothing to say, say about it. Uh, lack of involvement in the course research and planning process. So it's like I said earlier, if you research your courses and you plan and, and you pre prepare yourself, so like some of the programming classes I took were pretty difficult. I took a C++ class. It was extremely difficult because uh, it was literally my first, I think it was, if I recall, it was my first programming class um, uh, or excuse me, my second, I think. Anyway, I, it was, had I not prepared for it uh, and, and I think I would have been, I would have been very, it would have been one of my, I would have got a low grade in that class. But because I took the time a couple of weeks beforehand, uh, I was doing very well in my previous class. So while I was attending my previous class, I knew this was going to be a tough class coming up. I did some research on it, talked to the professor, and asked for some pointers to get prepared for the class, uh, which in itself I think established a good rapport with my professor. And he sat on the board of, of the C++ program language, I later found out. So um, he, I never felt like... Uh, he was unwilling to to make extra effort because he knew I was serious about doing well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, research and plan, and, and, and if you have to, start your courses early. You know, do what you got to do to start researching and studying and get your course material early. Uh, students changing their degrees, I, I'm not going to kick that too much. 
uh, whenever you change your degree, like I said, stay on your finances and your, and your credits. Uh, if you do that, you come up short. Like I said, don't blame anyone but yourself. Um, if you stay on top of it, there's no reason why you should be coming to the end of your degree and then and then be told that you don't have the finances or the degree uh, credits to, 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 to graduate. If you stay abreast of it or you research it before you do it, which is my first suggestion, um, changing your degree path is probably the worst thing you can do and one of the biggest things that will cut your, your college uh, finances and your credits and your ability to graduate. That's like one of the biggest reasons, I think. Um, okay. Okay, uh, things that will secure a path to graduation. Um, these are things that I did, I felt like really contributed and made my path to graduation so much easier. Uh, show staff and professors respect. Um, it kind of goes with that don't bite the hand that feeds you kind of uh, uh, saying. Uh, during my time at C2, I encountered difficulties both in staff. Uh, I, I, in, I, you may encounter difficulties, excuse me, with uh, during your time as a student. Both staff and professors will ease, uh, easily get you through those rough patches. Uh, so don't walk into the staff office yelling and being disrespectful. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it does you no good to disrespect the same people you are seeking assistance from. Uh, I, I mean, I, I could go on about that. I've seen it happen multiple times, uh, spe specifically the two incidents that I mentioned. Um, I, I know it seems self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised how often that happens. Uh, just don't do it. Show your staff members and your professors respect. I, and I, I honestly can say that that really was, the, I think, the number one reason why I did so well, uh, both from the staff and professors. The level of help I got is what made my time at CTU so much fun and easy-er. It's not easy, but it's easier if you have that assistance. Uh, CTU has a vast amount of resources. They have a digital library that's uh, that I... I could tell you that I, I, I barely, to be honest with you, I think I barely even scratched the surface of in doing research for my papers. Uh, um, it's pretty vast, and you have actual, uh, uh, excellent resources at CTU, so make sure you use those. Um, the CTU app, <laughs> I know this is kind of silly to mention, but I never missed one single assignment, nor was I ever late for an assignment. Um, and that was, I think, I can I can truly contribute to that, well, my own personal motivation to get my, my assignments in. But that app kept me on track, and they were probably about, uh, I'd say about 10 instances through both degrees where either I forgot something or or that the app just saved my butt. I mean, it really did. It really just gave me that reminder. I'm like, oh, man, I, I thought I'd already done that, you know, or, or I knew I hadn't done this assignment properly. Because in the app, it, it outlines uh, everything you need to know about that assignment. And it's, it's a really good app. I just I can't say enough about it. Uh, resource and plan, uh, resource. Uh, resources and planning your your courses. Uh, I meant to put uh, research, but research and plan your courses. When you re research all your courses uh, beforehand, uh, it, it really makes the unexpected uh, uh, hurdles much easier. Um, I, I never, like I said before, I never went into any single class unexpected, un unknowing of what was coming. Uh, I'd already read several chapters into the class, into the course before I started, um, and uh, you actually have uh, in the app. <laughs> funny enough, this is from my reminder. This in the app, if your class starts that Monday, the Friday before, you actually have access to that course, so you can actually start your course uh, assignments early and get ahead. And I always did that every single time. Um, and the due dates are well, uh, are, are, are very well organized to allow ample time for you to, to have to finish all the assignments. That was another thing within the app that uh, it outlined all the due dates um, and what was expected of me as a student. So those primary things I think was really helped me. Okay, I want to briefly touch on some false things I've heard uh, either through word of mouth or seen on the internet uh, about CTU. Uh, that are absolutely false. Uh, professor gives uh, professors give away grades. Um, I saw this actually in a video uh, where a guy said he turned in a bogus assignment and got an A. I, I can't speak to that dude or, or where, where what that. Uh, to be honest with you, I felt like it sounded kind of like uh, a made-up story, um, something he was just kind of looking to cast shade on CTU or that professor. Um, 
all I know is I can tell you that I've seen a lot of students fail uh, in their assignments and you know, not in the overall course, perhaps. But I've seen students that didn't apply themselves and, and tried to skate through the course absolutely blow a massive F in that course. Um, and then um, later on, you know, I'd see them around or I'd talk to the student if they were friends and they ended up having to redo the course. Um, so from my own personal experiences, I always turn my assignments in either prior or on the due dates. So I, I never have a direct, uh, you know, and, and I never try to gaff off work and turn in anything other than what's expected of me as a student, uh, a good student. So I can't speak to that, that, that story that guy told, but I can tell you that I never saw one time any professor give someone they didn't deserve uh, as far as grades or, or ending uh, GPA in that class. Um, uh, the professors are pretty easy to work with. If you're a student that applies himself, you're going to, you're going to get the help and you'll even get some leeway on certain aspects. You know, uh, they're not completely unflexible at the, at CTU. Uh, they'll work with you. Uh, but that being said, they're not going to give you anything. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I, I, I personally have never seen that and can't speak to it. So, uh, actually being factual. Um, staff does not care about students uh, or their financial standing. Um, this is another absolute lie, uh, and I will call it just that. I mean, based off my personal experiences, uh, I've seen videos on YouTube where this one guy really tried to blow this out of proportion, and I knew that individual um, knew his situation, and he created that entire situation himself, um, and it had to do with the changing of the degree, which is why I stress that so much. Um, so just keep in mind that a lot of times the, anything you see online, um, there's generally another side to that story and you should consider the source. I think, uh, you know, I'm not saying everyone's not telling the truth about their situation, but generally, and it's been my experiences from what I've seen at CQ and what I see online on YouTube, um, that I'd say a high, very, I'd say the 90 percentile, if not 95 percentile is all, it's all lies. Um, because my experiences have been nothing but positive, um, and I've never had financial or credit situations. Um, but then again, I, I stay on top of all that. You know, I don't just let I don't let student success pick my classes, because they will do that if you let them. Um, and if you're that student that doesn't care what your next class is, then that's fine. I mean, that's if, but but don't blame others if you are that student when you don't get the class you want or the class is too difficult and you didn't research it. If you set yourself up for success, you're going to do great. You're going to do good things and you're going to do good at CTU. But don't put blame or throw shade on others when you fail to set yourself up for success and then you either fail or do poorly. I was like, that's on you. And I've seen people do that constantly. So just keep that in mind. Hey, uh, I wanted to point out some things to keep in mind before you commit to your uh, to any degree uh, uh, or specifically at at CTU. Uh, research your degree of interest. If it's a difficult degree, make sure you properly uh, prepare. Uh, set yourself up for success. Having a degree in computer science, engineering, or a difficult degree sounds awesome. Uh, still, these degree paths are very difficult, and if you are uh, not ready or do not understand the level of commitment required to achieve them, you may fail. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. So make sure that you properly research that degree. Um, if there is something within that degree that you know you're going to have difficult with, don't let that be a discouraging reason for you not to seek that degree path. Instead, before you start that degree, seek that book out that they that they use in that course or that they use at that school at CTU and, and take the time before you start the degree to alleviate that concern by learning. Um, it, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory in regards to preparation side. Um, if, if you know that that course is coming, man, just knock it out ahead of time. Learn, learn what you know you're going to have to go through. And uh, also use your resources while you're in there to make sure you don't fail, like tutoring and, and uh, student, your, uh, your fellow student's assistants and, and the professor as well. Uh, be honest with yourself when choosing your degree. Uh, are you truly willing, uh, willing to fully commit to your degree path and want to achieve that degree? Uh, being honest with yourself, I think, is the number one thing you can do to save yourself a lot of heartache. Um, I understand that people generally want to set high goals for themselves, but if you're not properly preparing and you're not willing to properly prepare, 
um, then be honest with yourself that perhaps that's not the proper direction for you. Because uh, none of these degree paths and uh, the ones I've mentioned, like computer science, engineering, or to be honest with you, any technical uh, aspect of any degree that I've seen at CTU, they involve an extensive amount of studying and research, and, and, and they're going to require a, a high level of commitment from you. So if you're not that person, you need to be honest with yourself and save yourself some heartache and maybe choose a different path. <clears throat> Make sure that uh, you're, uh, you and those in your life understand the commitment uh, to your degree and that it may take away or impact your personal life for uh, you to achieve that educational goal. Um, that's important. Make sure you let people closest to you know that, hey, look, um, I'm not going to be able to fully commit my time to you guys because I, I need to make sure I knock out and better myself. And I added anyone that wants to see you better yourself or grow should have no issues with this uh, in, in pursuing of a degree or anything in that matter. But I uh, just wanted to add that. Uh, it's probably a good indication or a red flag if they got a problem with that. <laughs> just saying. Uh, C2 is a private school. I want to point out that uh, point that out because uh, courses aren't easy. The standards are set with it internally. Um, and they're also uh, industry level standards, so they may switch and change from time to time. Um, it's not to throw you off. Uh, it's it's primarily to make sure that you're they're meeting industry standards and requirements. Um, throughout both of my degrees, I saw some changes in my degree. Um, not not the courses, but um, the follow on students had different courses, and I kept up on that. And um, I would change my degree to make sure that I was. Uh, uh, I, if I had, there was a course that I thought would be better than the one I had scheduled, then I would I would schedule that. Uh, but not so much the courses as there are the standards. Um, the standard and requirements are often increased at CTU, and I just want to throw that out there. Um, you got to be ready for that because it's a private school. It's a for-profit school. Um, so that it allows them a lot of leeway to increase uh, standards to match industry standards. Uh, and I th it's a good thing, uh, unlike traditional schools that, that remain stagnant for years and often uh, change is, is, doesn't happen quickly. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but it doesn't happen as quickly. So be prepared for that. Uh, understand that commitment as an adult when signing a contract to, to attend CTU. I know this should go without saying. Um, as an adult, if you commit financially to a degree, um, the government isn't going to pay for your degree if, if, if you didn't use benefits or, or financial aid. Uh, be aware of the financial aid that you seek. Uh, is, it a, is it a grant? Is it a Pell Grant? What, what, which ones involve paying back? Uh, understand your, your, your financial standing is what I'm saying. And also, if you fail in that degree, um, it doesn't negate your, your financial commitment uh, because you signed that degree. Um, when they start calling you for their money, <laughs> um, I mean, that's on you. I've seen a couple videos online about this, and to be honest with you, I think it's kind of um, it's kind of sad that an adult would sign their name to a contract um, and not realize that there's a certain level of expectation. Um, so make sure you read your contract. Make sure you understand the commitment that you are signing. Um, C2 doesn't go out of the way to, to throw you under the bus, uh, but they're they're a business, and they're in the business for making money as so they can continue. Uh, providing the education that they provide. And they're not going to let your failures slow that down. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can enter any IT. I want to throw this in there because I thought it was it didn't relate to CTU, but I, it kind of related to seeking a degree. It says uh, you can enter the IT slash com uh, computer industry without a degree. Uh, there's a lot of fields you can enter without a degree, but a lot of people don't realize is there are actual laws that prohibit employers from uh, limiting your pay based off your educational knowledge. Um, as well as positional. Um, so when you have your educational already in the bag, um, that's one reason that, you, that an employer cannot deprive you of the pay that you are um, that you are authorized or should be getting. Um, it justifies what you should be, what your worth in pay is. So keep in mind, the higher your education, the more your 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 financial worth in pay is. Now, having said that. Keep in mind, if you're going in the IT computer industry, um, don't expect, have realistic, realistic expectations. I've talked to employers, and one of the biggest problems they have is realistic expectations when they're hiring someone straight out of college. All right, you're not going to be CEO by the end of six months' time in the college, at that, at the, in, in the industry, and you're sure as heck not going to be making six figures like everyone thinks. Um, if you go into the industry and you're making six figures right off the bat, you will consider yourself lucky. 
it's not impossible, but you consider yourself lucky. Um, also, um, by getting your education, you're alleviating possible progression in, in position. Um, uh, you're, you're, you're increasing your capability to progress up the ladder, whether it be in a leadership position and or um, a more prestigious position that, that pays more, you know. So once you're in the industry, having a degree helps reduce the, uh, the amount of capability your employers have to limit your progression in pay and position. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I want to wish everyone the best, and I appreciate you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read this uh, word for word so I can. Uh, I want to extend appreciation for watching this video, and I wish all of you the best in your degree path at CTU or college of your choice. In closing, I want to point out something that, about individuals I see online uh, casting shade or negativity on CTU or any uh, other college. Uh, most of these in individuals have been uh, primar the primary source of their own failure or heartache and often um, want to push blame on others. I think that's pretty common knowledge to anyone who knows people. Uh, I have even seen individuals who have never even attended CTU attempt to cast shade on the school uh, for unknown reasons. I, I can't tell you from my, I can tell you from my own experience, amazing personal experiences while attending CTU uh, is an amazing university the courses and professors will teach you everything you need to know to establish a strong career foundation. Uh, I had a great time while attending CTU, and because uh, I was an adult and took action to ensure my standing was always on solid, was always solid in every aspect of my educational path, uh, I never had a single issue while attending CTU. Um, the staff was always amazing and beyond uh, helpful, and everyone. Uh, um, Everyone's level of professionalism was above reproach, to be honest with you. Uh, so when considering anything uh, you see that is negative about any college, uh, but specifically CTU, uh, you are uh, uh, that you might be considering attending, uh, consider a negative source uh, of information. Uh, I would suggest reading between the words being spoken. Uh, often there are underlining reasons that are gone unmentioned when someone is being negative or attempting to discredit others. I know that's kind of common common knowledge to an adult through an adult perspective, um, but I just wanted to mention that because uh, if you start seeing people uh, online, uh, unless they are like calmly exp like explaining both sides of the situation and it's legit. And you'll you'll be able to easily tell the the legitimate uh, gripes and complaints. Um, I would seriously uh, second guess the negativity that you're hearing. And as a as a student, as a as a person, if you're that person looking for a college or you're looking to start college, um, seek the positive. Uh, because really, what it comes down to is you. Um, regardless of the college that you attend, what you get out of the college that you are attending is basically what you put into it. You know, if you if you finish with a degree and you don't know what your your degree path, then really then you didn't apply yourself. That means that you didn't dig into your studies. That means that you didn't really apply yourself to remember things. Um, and that is possible. I've seen I've seen guys graduate or go through a degree program, and not have anywhere near the knowledge that they they are going to be required to demonstrate their first day on the job. Uh, it's not impossible for people to do that. Um, uh, they just have to do the work. And you'll see it as a, as a college student. But if you're that person that dig that likes to dive into the knowledge and dives into the books and really understand your 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 industry of, of interest and your and your degree of study, then you're going to do very well. Um, my best advice is just apply yourself, um, disregard and dis uh, and dismiss the naysayers, uh, both in your personal life and, and otherwise. Um, apply yourself, lock on to that degree and that graduation day, and just go for it, uh, and you're going to do great. Uh, I wish everyone the best. I hope this uh, kind of casts a positive light on CTU and, and also anyone who has ambitions to seek degrees elsewhere. Uh, don't let people hinder your capability by through their own negative opinions. Uh, make the judgment, make the commitment, and then drive forward, and you're going to do good things. Uh, best wishes to everyone. I hope you all do well. Take care.